Welcome. Welcome to Home Keepers. Just come right on in, my friend. You have a cup of tea handy. Join us for a while. It's a good idea to just take a little break. I'm so somehow envious of uh, our, some friends of other uh, countries. You know, they always take a little break in the day. And the uh, British, I think they stop to have their tea. And Americans are 100 miles an hour all the time. So I hope you'll consider this a respite today. And it should because of our uh, topic, what we're going to be talking about. And that is this book by Donna Pyle, my guest, called Quenched, Christ's Living Water for a Thirsty Soul. This is one rich book. I'm anxious for you to hear what we can say about it, and then I hope that you will get it. So that's my guest. But um, I have failed to welcome you, so come right on in. New friend, old friend, whatever, we're glad to have you and hope that you will be a regular viewer. We've been on the air for many, many years, and we're trying to make a difference in the home, and the number one thing to do that is to change the people in the home and turn their hearts toward the Lord, and it just change everything for the better. And I'm going to join Stephanie, who's getting a little bit puffed up about all of the Facebook friends she's getting, but I still want you to be her friend, so we'll give you that information later. I'm just trying to keep her level and humble and all those good things. We're going to make an angel food trifle, and there's no end to the combinations that you can put in a trifle, but this one really grabbed my attention, so that's why we're doing that. I have a feeling it's going to taste good without even trying it. Before I join her, though, I again want to offer you, I've got a few more copies of this, The Total Marriage Makeover by our regular friend who comes on every month, Dr. David Clark. And from every indication I receive from you folks, you love Dr. Clark. And if there are any problems in your marriage, I don't know why you don't run to the phone uh, to get this and see what you can do. You can get, <laughs> in these kind of books, you can get so much free advice where it cost you quite a bit to go to a, a Christian psychologist. So if you want the total marriage makeover by Dr. Clark, call 1-800-229-0059 if you use that credit card or write to me at box 6922 Clearwater, Florida 33758 and we will get it right out to you um, when there's so much wonderful information available for relationships and health and money. I don't know why people don't run out and get these books and learn about that. So there's the information and I've joined Stephanie over here by now. How are you, darling? I'm great, how are you doing? You got the memo? Yes, we're, we're the black, black and white. white. We're yep. black and white. And um, I took some advice from you. Mm -hmm. Well, you're always saying, cook up the meat ahead of time and freeze it and, and I figured out I don't like to buy lunch meat. I just think there's too much going on there. Mm -hmm. There's just, you don't want to eat a whole lot of that. Right. So you know what I do? Because of you. I buy a rotisserie chicken and I can make six bags of it and mm -hmm. I could throw it in the salad or throw it in the pasta or whatever. It's a great idea. Yes. I'm doing it. So. I'm glad you're doing it. I just did it yesterday actually for my lunches this week. I threw some leftover chicken I had in the crock pot along with black beans, refried beans, corn, rotel tomatoes, and a taco seasoning packet. And I have lunch for the week, and it was under $5. Well, why didn't you bring me some? Um, I didn't think you'd want any. It's it's pretty heavy Do you have some lunch. more? Oh, sure. Is it real hot? No, it's not hot okay. at all. What, what is this? This was yogurt, That's right? yogurt. That's mm -hmm. two cups of yogurt. You have a cup of um, ricotta, ric cheese. ricotta cheese that you're going to mix up. And then I have an angel food cake here that I am just dicing up. And we have blueberries, and we have ah. strawberries, and we have um, light whipped topping. <laughs> and as I said at the top of the show, the reason for this was this ricotta cheese and the... <laughs> I don't know if I trust you. <laughs> well, look at all you. black. Um, on the... Um, and the oh, yogurt. look at you. You're a pro. That is, that is <laughs> going to taste so Oh, and this is going to be good. delicious. So I'm just lining the bottom with some of the angel food cake. And angel food cake is not that bad. 
No. For you. Um, no, it was like 150 calories for an eighth of a cake, no which is not bad. No cholesterol whatsoever yeah. in it. Plus, we're using um, light whip topping. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, they suggest everything light in here, fat-free. So, yeah. um, as desserts go, I don't think you could beat this one. Yeah. So, um, I made a big payment on my car today. I am down to almost the last few dollars like I'm almost there and now I just want it to be over with <laughs> well we will have a celebration oh I will I've already planned on taking like cupcakes to the bank with me because I'm celebrating <laughs> with the tellers when I make that last payment and I'm not even kidding uh -huh. I am going to I think you would I might take a balloon will, will somebody I uh, take get a cupcakes. picture for us I I will because I am going to celebrate that will be the first time in the 24 years that my husband and I have been together that we have two paid off vehicles and I'm That's so wonderful. excited, I can't even stand it. Well, um, I, I keep bringing up your finances mm -hmm. because, and I hope it doesn't bother you, but no. because so many folks out there just absolutely uh, can identify. Mm -hmm. um, but the other thing is that you've been with us a couple years or so. Mm -hmm is that they realize it is a long haul. You Depending know, on where you start, yes, it's a long haul. It is, and you, you know what? It's a, it's a roller coaster ride mm -hmm. because we got very extremely close to being out of credit card debt mm -hmm. where we just had our mortgage in the car. And then, you know, I want to be truly transparent mm -hmm. because I don't want to be false. We're back in credit card debt mm -hmm. right now because of some bills that came up that we just didn't have the mm -hmm. money for. We're not, it, it's not extravagant but spending they're not or anything. this kind of credit no. card. Yeah. Yeah. And I know people are saying, well, you went on a cruise and everything. We truly did budget that. That was all paid for in cash. But some of these other things yeah. that have popped up. Besides, it's a, you know, it's a balance. It was a family wedding. You yeah, it's, you know, it's a balance. So, so, so truth be told, the car is almost paid off, and that will give us a big chunk I'm to put towards you, we'll the credit cards. I'm telling you, we'll do a whole show on it. I'm excited. I'm so, I'll have pictures from the bank. That in is fact, good, friends. That's anybody a... can go into the bank and celebrate with me. No. <laughs> <laughs> Let me know. I'll go with you. Okay. Okay. So we have the angel food cake, and then we're gonna put some of the um, that's a vanilla, what, vanilla yogurt. yogurt and ricotta cheese. Yep. And then we're gonna put some strawberries and some blueberries. This just looks really delicious. Mm -hmm. Strawberries, blueberries. Yeah, they asked for a cup of strawberries, but. She was complaining there should be more. So. I just mentioned it. I'm not sure I was complaining. <laughs> I'm going to put, it doesn't call for a whipped topping in the middle, but I am the baker and I am the one who's going to put it in there. <laughs> uh, do we have information for uh, her Facebook? Yeah. You, she has 137. 237. Oh, 237. 237 friends. Please come and be my friend. We. I give, um... I tell about my weekends and what I'm doing to save money, and mm -hmm. people are, you know, telling me what they're doing, giving me more ideas. It's great. Yes, and also uh, I got an email from a viewer who called you the coupon queen. And I'm getting lots of lots of questions about the cake that we made last night. <laughs> that I went crazy. They're coming over. to my computer. <laughs> that was a bad cake. Oh, that was the best cake ever in the history of cakes <laughs> <laughs> okay so two oh, layers look at that. That we're going to put that gorgeous. over we're going to put this now on these things should you let them sit a little bit you or just certainly could but we're not going to no. no no oh my that is really beautiful oh m and Gee. as mentioned before, the recipe calls for everything and low look, fat. And it's beautiful. It's red, white, uh -huh. and blue. You could use it for... Now, yeah, we do need more strawberries put on top, but we don't have them. We don't have them. But I think it might taste better if it just sat a little bit. Oh, yeah. Well, uh, everything I married together, the bread would mm -hmm. take in all the flavors, the angel food cake. There you go. Uh, we don't need to t taste this. We know. Oh, we need to taste it. Mm. We'll get some blueberries. Mm-hmm. She's in rapture. That is a little piece heaven. of heaven on earth. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I think we're going to have a real happy crew here. Oh. All right, friends, if you want this recipe, that information is coming up on your screen. And you, uh, most people email us, and we'll get it right out to you. And this...
you could see how easy it was and it would really be a crowd pleaser. It's angel food trifle. Now, I want you to it. meet my new best friend, Donna Pyle. Stay with me. If you would like a copy of today's recipe, just write the address on your screen, or you can email your request to artheline at rippy.org. Boy, the wonderful thing about doing this show is the wonderful people you meet and uh, that we can give them a platform so you can meet them. And it's just wonderful to know how big the kingdom of God is and how many different kind of people he has and all their talents. And Donna Pyle is an author and a speaker. She's authored 23 Bible studies on DVD, right? Two of them DVD. Do, and um, these are series. Uh, she has a passion for studying and teaching the Word. She's a member of the Salem Lutheran Church, I believe that's in Houston, is that right? Uh, the Worship Team and Women's Missionary League and um, another ministry about human trafficking or something? Yes, Love 146, mm -hmm. uh, to prevent child trafficking in the U.S., which is just a horrible, horrible problem. Yeah. Well, God bless you and welcome. Welcome Thank to you Home for Keepers. Me. Uh, and I might say she's a very fine writer. I. I read two or three books a week, you know, for the show. I've learned how to speed read, but I can recognize good writing, and you really are. However, you were not um, raised in church. Well, let me tell you, I've told the viewers hundreds of times, I love to meet people like you because I was raised in the church and wouldn't trade it, God knows. But you see the validity of the gospel mm -hmm. when he reaches out to someone like you who you were just on your way to hell. <laughs> And the That's Holy true. Spirit intercepted, and uh, now you've got a great ministry, so I, I love hearing that. Um, tell us how you did come to Christ. That was pretty interesting. Well, it, you know, my parents were, were Christian, but Dad was in real estate, so his weekends were spent, you know, signing contracts, touring clients and stuff, and so every now and then Mom would get us in church, but at some point, I just, because it wasn't ingrained in us, at some point I was just like, you know, that's not part of me, that's not who I am, and it's a waste of a Sunday. Mm -hmm. And so I just didn't want to do it. And so as a teenager, I literally just walked around and said no. Mm -hmm. And then, um, yeah, of course, my life down spiraled, you know, got into horrible debt, bad friends, and then um, God sent this gentleman into my life that invited me to church. And I walked in those doors, I was so scared, you know, because everybody looked perfect, you know, and I wasn't. Mm -hmm. And I, I kept trying to hide my sin like a dress slip, you know, uh, coming out, you know. <laughs> but uh, eventually I realized that people love you just for who you are and uh, that God loves you, thank goodness, for who we are. And it was just started a journey. And it's been, I wouldn't trade it for the world. I think it, it's just so fascinating that for some reason, he went with you the first few weeks or so, right, this friend? For, I ended up marrying him. Oh, did you? Okay. <laughs> so, yes, but, uh, you know, I wouldn't go unless he was there. But at some point... some point, you had to go by yourself. I had yourself to go by myself. He called and said he was sick one morning, mm -hmm. and without thinking, I said, okay, I'll just bring you soup later. Picked up my Bible purse and headed out, and I was halfway to church while I realized, <gasps> yeah. I'm going alone. They're going to yeah. attack me. They're going to, which is horrible to say, but that's honestly how I felt. Mm -hmm. And But the, at that day, showed me that they accepted me for who I was, not just because I was someone's girlfriend, you know, so it was really amazing. This, uh, I, I just love these stories about how the Holy Spirit maneuvers, uh, maneuvers us and places us and all. Um, <clears throat> you um, seem to immediately get interested in the scriptures because you, no, you had no real understanding before that. Maybe you knew a few Bible stories, but... No, not really. I mean, I had always heard God. He was like the big guy, mm -hmm. but Jesus was the son, and I was like, but I don't remember hearing that God was married, and so literally I knew nothing. Oh, you didn't even I just know, didn't know virgin anything. birth or anything? And no, <coughs> it was really what kept me going when I first mm -hmm. started studying Scripture is to try to understand why God would love someone like me, mm -hmm. and that just kept me looking in Scriptures, and before I knew it, it was just, I just couldn't stop, and I love Scripture. Now, <clears throat> you have written other books, but we're going to talk about this one's new, right? Yes, very nice. Uh, called Quenched. And I guess what amazed me was how many metaphors you could find in Scripture about water 
and how we need it and how that's exactly what Jesus is. Do you know what it was that drew you to that? The water? A particular well, truth, yeah. Because I spent the first 23 years of my life just dehydrated, just trying to fill it with wealth, health, spiritually fame, dehydrated. everything. <clears throat> spiritually mm -hmm. dehydrated, yeah. And uh, just uh, that's always been in the back of my mind of how mm -hmm. to to find that place to hydrate. And Jesus was it. And my whole ministry is based on a water theme, and it's just... He's the wellspring of life. Yes, let's put her website up. Uh, it's Artesian Ministry, so there we are <coughs> in the water again. And uh, but the the richness of the message is what is so important. You used to do a lot of clubbing, right? Night clubbing and all. And uh, now that you look back, do you wonder what in the world? No, I wouldn't trade it because that's mm -hmm. actually how I met my husband, mm -hmm. who actually is no longer my husband, mm -hmm. but that's a different story. Mm -hmm. But uh, he w had been drugged to a birthday party at this club one night, and I was there, and that's how we met. We had actually danced all night, and then he invited me to church the next day, and I was I was actually mad. I was like, what's a Christian doing in a bar? Yeah. You know, And but God had him there for a reason, mm -hmm. and that really started. It just got me out of that life, got me out of that mess. But when you look back, what is the fascination? I, the reason I ask that, because I've been a Christian all my life. I'm, maybe I've never been in a nightclub even, uh, unless it was one that was converted for a Sunday <laughs> school class. Um, but I see people, sometimes if you're out kind of early on a Friday night on a weekend, it's full of people that they're just nursing one drink and they're talk, 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 talk. And I wonder, what is the fascination here? of clubbing. I actually only did that for like six months because I fell into a group of friends at work who really loved that. Mm -hmm. And I thought, okay, I'm a single young woman. I'm in Houston. If you want to find a mate, this is what you do. You mm -hmm. go to clubs. Mm -hmm. And that's really for six months. That's mm -hmm. what it was. And um, it was just, I think, looking for love in all the wrong places. Now that song is stuck in my head forever. But yeah. Yes. And uh, that is a picture of our culture today. They're, they're seeking something. And Maybe they'll, you know, maybe there'll be someone there like you that, that can lead you to the right place, which we will um, talk about the Samaritan woman. Mm -hmm. And you uh, draw a lot of uh, wonderful, wonderful teachings from her. What, what's foremost in your mind when you think about that woman at the well, married five times, living with a guy? Uh, a Jew should have nothing to do with Samaritan, let alone a woman. Well, I just think of a sense of hopelessness that she would have had. Like, okay, I'm just going to the well. And she went at noon, which tells me, because in that day and time, the women went early in the morning or late because it was cooler. But she went at noon, which tells me that she was shunned or that maybe they weren't nice to her, mm -hmm. you know. And um, just that hopelessness of another day, here's a well, another man, another whatever. And just that sense of, mm -hmm. I don't know, hopelessness. And there's Jesus right there, the hope of the world, waiting for her. And the the instantaneousness of all of it, that she goes and says, I just met somebody who <laughs> told me everything. And that's what the message does. Uh -huh. I mean, when it gets, when his wellspring of life gets in you, people no longer, when you're excited about that and you're talking the truth of the message, they no longer see who you were or what you've done or who you've been. They just see the message. And that's, that's our job as Christians. I mentioned when I met you about 45 minutes ago, um, that your book reminded me of something I know all the time, and that is how far beneath the privileges we live, Christians, born again, spirit-filled Christians, whatever, how far beneath those privileges that we live because we don't stay in that hydrated, hydrated uh, condition with Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Our humanness gets in the way. Yeah, you say our shallow wells, our job security, financial stability, and family ties. That's right. And so we look to those things to... Uh, to validate us or try to give us a sense of purpose or a sense of, yeah, a sense of hydration, a sense of keeping going. But none of that's going to do it long term. It'll do it maybe for a season, mm -hmm. but that will not do it long term. Now, you also <clears throat> talked about the uh, man at the Pool of Bethesda, and I've often thought about him. You had some of the uh, same ideas that I had about him, but... Tell us uh, what you saw in his overall personality at all. That he just, he kept making excuses. I mean, he had been laying at that, by that pool for 38 years, which was the lifespan of some people of his day. And I'm thinking, 
for 38 years, you couldn't get just a little closer each day. You know, it's like, why it's here. <laughs> And you see it in the story, but mm -hmm. the exchange between Jesus and mm -hmm. the man at the pool is just every time Jesus asks him something, he either it's an excuse or he's trying to validate his inability to do something. And there's no uh, sense of, you know, oof, mm -hmm. there's no sense of whatever. And um, I just, I don't get that. And I just kept looking at that thinking, why is he there? But then I thought, our friends are the people around us. And maybe he didn't want to seem like he was putting himself in front of his friends. I don't know. Yeah, and that point of question, Jesus, do you want to be well? Mm -hmm. That's what he had. And I, I've been in the ministry all my life. I've seen a lot of people like that. That I believe if they, didn't, if they weren't sick, they would have lost their best friend. They love to talk about their sicknesses. And one lady was so bad. I tried, as a pastor's wife, I tried to spin a little positive and she'd have none of it I thought lady if the Lord healed you you'd be disappointed well some people like some people really don't want to get well mm -hmm. they either like the attention or they like making excuses or they really just they're fine with how they are mm -hmm. and that's just settling that's just settling and there are no words of Jesus to be dismissed or think they're wasted and when he said do you want to be well that's something that anybody that needs to hear that should take into into consideration. Uh, you, now you <coughs> go to your book is in two parts. The second part's uh, the veteran disciples of Jesus. Why the division? The first the first one was that more for like a new believer or something. Absolutely. And, and then and then the <coughs> second, which I thought was pretty interesting, is uh, the disciples of Jesus who should know everything. Right. The first part of the book has to do with new Christians or seekers, because that used to be me. It's mm -hmm. like, I didn't even know what the wellspring of life was. It's like, what is that even, what is it? And these are, those are stories that relate to new Christians who feel lost and confused and not good enough. And it's how to get past all that. It's practical, biblical examples and life application of, okay, here's the well, and this mm -hmm. is how you do it. And the second half of it is to veteran Christians, because I've been a Christian over 20 years now. And on this side of it, we get exhausted and we get tired. And sometimes, you know, we just lose the well's coordinates. And it's, this is how to fall in love again with Jesus, how to fall back into that wellspring of life and, and drink again from the only thing that, that hydrates us. That's so important because he said, you'll never thirst again if you will stay attention. If you just tuned in, I'm talking to Donna Pyle, the author of Quenched, and the information is on the screen as to where you can get this. Um, as I produce and uh, host this program, it goes over and over in my mind of the wonderful materials that are out there, friends. If you have like a little home study group or <clears throat> Sunday school class, you could teach this could easily teach it and uh, you might think about that I always tell the viewers people like you've done all the hard work and all the <laughs> all the hard lifting okay now in the veterans uh, the veteran disciples of Jesus you defined uh, risky faith <clears throat> I wonder if new converts are a little better than this sometimes than the old guys I wonder because some I can really identify with <clears throat> Peter because mm -hmm. he was so impetuous just to leap out of the boat. Mm -hmm. But you know what? He had the faith to do that. Mm -hmm. But he also was the only one that knew that he knew that he knew that Jesus could save him because he's the one that felt Jesus' hand. He saw Jesus' eyes. The other disciples saw it. Yeah, they weren't clap. too sure maybe. <coughs> but Peter experienced it. And when we take mm -hmm. leaps of faith, it changes everything because mm -hmm. we know then and our message, our ministry through the grace and love of God changes. Yeah, and that should be habit for the veterans but sometimes I've seen new Christians just with you know total mm -hmm. abandon and there they go um, you talk about treading instead of trusting mm -hmm. and when you tread water you're going nowhere right right it's just the status quo and there's seasons in life when we do that there's just mm -hmm. so much going on we're in over our heads on some things and we're just treading but mm -hmm. when we trust him with the things that we need to let go that maybe we just are doing as a favor <clears throat> or whatever because our plates are so full and they don't have to be they don't have to be we mm -hmm. ask for more hours and I'm just like we've got enough hours we need to prioritize yes and the uh, <clears throat> it's in those daily routines that we need to remember I, you never stop learning because I continue to learn that the smallest detail you can call on the Lord and he will organize your day better. 
Always. He really will. Always. All right. I love the story of 1 Samuel. Oh, that's my favorite. Yeah, and I read that this morning. I'm reading through the Old Testament again, and I read it again, where um, everybody <laughs> was picking on David. Uh, they wanted to kill him, really. And everybody was mad at him, and things had not gone well. And what he did, and I'll let you tell the audience if they don't know, what he did is such a huge lesson for everybody. It is. He, he showed such grace to the tired soldiers. They had been fighting with the Amalekites, and they were asked to leave the army because mm -hmm. uh, the people didn't like who they were. Mm -hmm. And so they go back home to Ziklag, and their town has been destroyed. Their families have been Everything taken away. Everything was gone. Yes. And so they, without even resting, they head out to find their families. And these 600 soldiers with David get to the Brook Bazaar, and there are 200 that just can't go on. So David takes him and the 400, and they go rescue the families, come back. And the encounter of the 400 soldiers against the 200, David honors the worn out. And he says, you know what? They watch the baggage. Of course, that mm -hmm. isn't the deal. Mm -hmm. But he honored the worn out. And it made me wonder what we do with people in the church who are worn out. You know, let them rest. Mm -hmm. Let them rest. There's no clock on it. Let them rest. Honor the spun out, you know. Mm -hmm. But they were weeping till they couldn't weep anymore. Mm -hmm. that's, that's real crying, friends. But in all that, David encouraged himself in the Lord. Because it said he kept looking up. He kept looking uh -huh. every step. He kept looking up. And that's where he got his strength and his guidance. And that is just such a clear picture of what we need to do. And we, I forget sometimes. I think it's just oh, yeah. my strength or yeah. looking horizontally. And it's not well, enough. Well, when everything is against you, and the marriage is breaking down, and the kids are out of control, and everybody's mad at church maybe, everything, you can still encourage yourself in the Lord. Oh, what a lesson. What a lesson. Might be easier said than done, but it can be done. It for can sure. be done. Yeah. He is in the storm with us. Well, we are out of time, I'm sorry to say, but I would, I had another couple questions, but I won't get to them. But I, again, want to remind you to get a book that will really, it'll water your Christian life, if we're going to stick with that metaphor. It's just a wonderful book. Uh, by Donna Pyle, and God bless you for your ministry. It's Thank a you. great, Thank you great ministry. I hope you got the website, friends, and that you will go and um, uh, you'll, you can hear her speak a little bit on the, uh, on the website and learn more about the ministry. It's so refreshing when someone comes through with, with the touch of God on their life and they have gone deep into the Word and pulled out some great truths that we can all learn and live by. I hope it happens more often. Join me next time, friend, remembering there's no higher calling than that of a homekeeper. God bless you. If you should miss a homekeeper's program, you can catch up by going to www.ctnonline.com. Click on CTN programs and then on homekeepers.